The views and opinions expressed on any program are those of the persons appearing on the program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of the New Media Factory. Some programs on this network might include strong images and language and may not be suitable for all audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Hi, good evening everyone. My name is Amanda Fernandez from Secret FC. And tonight, unfortunately, Jonah is not going to be joining us because he's preparing for the clear dream match that's happening this Saturday at the University of Makati football field. If you guys want to check that out, gates open at 5 p.m. and the match actually starts at 7. Um, they have two very special guests, I believe. For Team Phil, they have... Dennis Weiss from Chelsea FC, and then in, for Team James, they have a, Fabio Cannavaro, the team captain of Italy. So I think that it's definitely worth going to the University of Makati and checking that out. Uh, tonight is actually a very, very special uh, episode because I have with me here Mr. Angelico Mercader, who is the founder of Football Philippines magazine. And um, Jellix, he's more known, more commonly known as Jellix. Jellix, if you want to give us a history about your, about yourself, you should. Well, first of all, thanks, yeah. Amanda, for, for having me here. Uh, it's really a pleasure to, to be uh, in, in your show. I, I was looking at, I was watching some of the episodes, and it's really great that uh, yeah. we have a chance to you know, share what we're doing in, in Football Philippines. Um, I've been playing since I think I was six years old. Ooh. And uh, since then, I was with the varsity team. Uh, I played in Rifa, and then I played for uh, UP uh, varsity team also when I was in college okay. for a couple of years. And after that, I joined the uh, uh, Sunken Garden United. Mm. And ever since, I've just been playing uh, almost every weekend. And, um, and now, uh, I'm in the media industry of football. Uh, we did a magazine, we started a magazine two years ago, it's called uh, Football Philippines. And um, aside from this, we're now into uh, digital media as well. We're doing um, a film with, with you actually, so you know. And uh, <laughs> yeah, we're doing a film with, with, uh, with Amanda, it's an indie film on football. And um, we're also doing a lot of events. Uh, I, together with some friends, started uh, what we call the Corporate Football League and it's ongoing right now. We're having our finals next week and we have like, I think, 24 teams, 600 players all together. Why don't you name some of the teams that are in the uh, CFL? Okay, uh, on top of my head, those that are doing well right now, yes. we have Pagcor, ADB, uh, we have RCBC. Mm -hmm. um, I'm especially fond of the RCBC team because uh, a few years back they weren't doing well and they didn't want to join the tournament because they were afraid they'll get creamed by other teams. Mm -hmm. But now they're like on top of their group already. Oh, so that's a are big they first division? Second division. They're second division. Yeah, so Guys, for uh, all of you who don't know about the corporate football league, it's an annual thing, and right now there are 24 teams um, that are in in the actual league, and it's a five month seeding process how long is the seeding process five, well it was around five weeks a month to to seed all the teams together and um 24 different teams yep and so the seeding process was pretty tedious and i think uh when i went to go watch and host a little bit i saw that the competition was actually very stiff i mean even the third division players were getting at it and they were quite rough from what I saw. Uh, I have yet to see the first division players play against each other, but it's actually very exciting. So Jellix is doing quite a number of things. So we're going to kind of break that down one by one. <laughs> okay. You may continue. <laughs> well, uh, to continue, CFL is actually uh, organized also by, by the magazine. So oh, okay. we're a media partner there and uh, uh, it's, the magazine is playing a role there. Uh, in fact, we're going to have a special edition mm -hmm. of the magazine uh, dedicated especially to all the teams that join the corporate football Great, league. Yeah. So the teams yeah. will see themselves on the cover yeah. of Football Philippines. Which is very exciting. Which is very exciting yes. for a lot of the uh, players out there who just started getting into football, you know, and all of a sudden they see themselves in this magazine. And, you know, I'm sure that if you've watched any of the games in Rizal or University of Makati, right. you're familiar with some of these editions. Um, the Malditas one, we have Angel Guirado, and of course, actually, the young husbands. James Young Husband here in the cover. And why don't and, you tell uh, us why there's 100 pesos? Oh, we front. start. This is our maiden issue, which uh, we 
we started this in 2011, early 2011. Right. Um, at first, we wanted to sell it, right? Show everyone. So we were selling it for 100 pesos, and then we discovered that uh, people weren't <laughs> just ready to buy them, so we just gave them out. And since then, we've been giving out the magazine for free, and we've been surviving by the goodwill of the sponsors right. and, and our readers. So uh, it's been, we've had like, I think 13 to 14 uh, issues already. Issues already. Yep. And why don't you name some of your sponsors here? We just probably want to thank them. Oh, Kia. Yeah, well, <laughs> the, the most active ones were uh, Kia, Suzuki, um, what else? Well, actually Suzuki is our number one uh, sponsor. They're okay. just all over the place. And uh, Puma is one as well. Uh, Mitre is, is there. Also, boot camp and shakies. And yeah. shakies. Yep. That's great. Um, so, you feel as though people aren't ready to buy a magazine for 100 pesos. Why didn't you just cut that in half before just giving it out for free? Um, people want to have something in their hands to bring home. Right. So, we thought that, you know, it's still good to just give them away as is. At least they have some memorabilia. Mm -hmm. So whenever we give them out uh, during the games, and we oh. couldn't give to all like 13,000 fans, yeah. right? But <laughs> we're able to give a substantial amount of, give out a substantial amount of copies. Um, and how many copies? Just um, I think so we're on average, we give out around uh, 6,000 uh, 6, copies. Yeah. Right. Depen depending on, on how the sponsors support us. Yeah. So, and they, they, they you know, they, they really go for it. Like people sometimes fight over it. Uh, For sure. I was just going to say, because when you attend um, such an important match, let's say the Philippine Ascals versus the LA Galaxy. So That's you have right. David Beckham coming to the Philippines and he's in the front cover of this magazine. It just makes sense that you kind of want to take one home um, just to remember the whole experience in Rizal Stadium when you saw Beckham. So I'm sure that a disappointed... Um, number 7,000 yeah. <laughs> went home without this so um, smart tactic actually <laughs> by not flooding the uh, the crowd with this magazine it becomes some sort of like a like a sort of jewel that people just want to keep for themselves and yeah. take home it's, it's yeah. really a lot it's, it's more of a keepsake because a lot of uh, media friends have been telling us why don't you just go online why don't you just let people precisely read, yeah you know read your articles online yeah. and i said you know there are a lot of articles about fo philippine football already that mm -hmm. are online mm -hmm. and what we'd like to give our readers is you know something that they can really bring home you know some, yeah. a, a souvenir mm -hmm. right like and uh, that's been i think the value of the magazine for the longest time like this one um i was especially this this became special when I went to Poland last year to watch the Euro 2012. Yeah. So I was giving out some magazines to to whoever, right? And I was introducing that you know we have football in the Philippines. That's really. Why, yeah, that's why there's football Philippines, and they were wondering. They were like asking, "Where's the Philippines, right?" Mm. And when they saw that that we have a, we have Beckham on the cover, it made sense to them. And you know, suddenly they they recognize, okay, football Philippines, okay. And Beckham went there. Then it must be a big thing. Right. Yeah. So. To me, that was, that was also something that we were recognized while you know, we were there. And you feel as though the uh, print made it, um, made it more effective to get to the people in Europe. I mean, yep. the fact that they didn't have to log on to any website to, to, to say, oh, uh, yeah, here's the Philippines. Uh, Beckham came to the Philippines. They have it right in their hand. It's, re it's already there. Yep. And uh, I think there's still a lot of value for uh, for, for printed uh, material. Yes. Uh, for some reason, just you know, people would have something, would want something uh, in their hands aside from just reading anything on the on the net. Right. Yeah. So that's why we're continuing on with this um, with this magazine. We're actually we're actually relaunching it uh, this year with a new look and uh, a new feel to it, mm -hmm. and new sponsors. And y you're gonna be in one of those new uh, issues as part of our film. So you have to wait for Amanda's okay. uh, uh, edition, especially when we <laughs> launch our film. Uh, she's a good actress, by the way. You guys should really watch her, uh, Ooh, her clips. Don't, <laughs> don't build it up yet. <laughs> <laughs> you, should, you, should, you should watch her lines, like in Filipino. In, in Filipino. You, you, wouldn't, you, know, you wouldn't believe Amanda acting I in Filipino. I speak Tagalog, everyone. I speak it. And, and in this movie. Drama. <laughs> huh? Um, okay. So, <laughs> Jalix. Okay, because you, you brought up the film, why don't you talk to us a little bit about the film? What's your role in the film? Why did you decide to start a film? And how long has it um, been in the process of 
Well, I think it's it's shooting, a con- filming. it's a continuing. Uh, what you should how should I call it? It's a continuing cause. Like when we started the magazine, we're just like um, thinking, you know, maybe we should do something since we're all all of us in in our team are aside from being football players, yes. uh, we're all photographers, we're all uh, graphic designers, right. we're all writers. Like I was editor in chief of my school paper mm-hmm. when I was in high school, so oh, okay. it just made sense that we did some you know something with with our skills, mm-hmm. right? And then later on, we got into film, we got into uh, digital video, right? And we got so fond of the uh, how should we call it? Uh, the Filipino films that are you know like the John Lloyd films and what John Lloyd. Yes. And we said you know well, maybe one way to bring football to to a lot more Filipinos is to do a film with a love story twist to it. Yeah. Uh, and introducing the game, right? Mm-hmm. So that's how the the film started. As you know, it started as a uh, it's supposed to be focused on football only, right? But then we found many twists to it. So, should I? Can I? Can I, like, uh, share the the plot? Yeah, the plot. Yeah, go ahead. So, the the story is about because um, you know there are a lot there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of football players from the province. Yes. Like Chiefy Kaligdon, for example, who who come to the to to the city hoping for a better chance in life because of football, right? And there are a lot of them. So our plot goes like there's a, you know, there's a guy from the province who's good in football. He comes to, 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 to Manila, hopefully to, to get some good education, like many do mm-hmm. uh, from FEU or UP and That's Masa. Yeah. yeah. And then he meets a, an AM girl. Uh, that's my role. That's her role. And uh, for some reason, because of football, they, you know, they just sort of, well, the guy falls in love and the girl doesn't know if she falls in love with him. And uh, that's the twist. No, that's the twist. And there's, the, <laughs> there's an entirely different uh, love story to it, but yes. a lot of football. So it's an exciting, it's really an exciting film that you guys should uh, watch out for. Um, how has the process been? This is your first film, yep. am I correct? How has the process been for you as director? Of this is, this I think this, was, this has been the most difficult endeavor because we're starting with zero budget. In fact, when we, when we said we're going to do a zero budget film, uh, people were laughing at us. Like They were saying, how can you do for a sure. zero budget film? Mm-hmm. But you've been in the shoots and you know how we don't have a budget for it. But, <laughs> you know, uh, we've been doing great with our shoots and we've, we've been um, filming a lot of good material. Mm-hmm. And uh, so it's, it's been like that. I guess the reason why we started with zero budget is because we wanted everyone involved to simply do it out of the love for football. Right. Out for the love of wanting to communicate uh, right. football, right? So everyone that has been participating uh, are just really doing it uh, because they want to share themselves and, and what, they want, uh, what, what they know of in football. Like you, you've been sharing your acting talent in your football talent correct in, in, the, in the film in, in the film yeah so um, I should be interviewing you right now about how you feel no, about this, it. Is, this is my job <laughs> to interview you um, are you enjoying directing this film very much very much because we don't have uh, professional actors and actresses right like we had to we had to workshop you in our own way right that's and true you, you saw how you develop as an actress you saw how uh, Stephen Permanis, the, the leading man, uh, developed himself as an, as an actor. So we see a lot of uh, progress uh, amongst the, the actors and the crew. And, you know, and uh, we just really want it done already and we want to show it uh, already. And fun fact for everyone out there who is slightly interested in the film. <laughs> um, Everyone involved in the production, the crew, the cameraman, the director, the actors and actresses are all football players. So if you really think about it, doing this film is just another way for us. I mean, consider it, it's a zero budget film. So it's just another avenue for us to show everyone out there that we have a passion for football, that we love football because it's zero budget. There's gas expense, there's a ton of expenses going from one location to the next, weather disturbances, shoot cancellations, camera equipment, all of that come into account. So when you think about it, I mean, I'm a soccer player. I started my own team. Um, uh, uh, Jellix started Football Philippines Magazine. He started the Corporate Football League. 
And doing this movie is just another avenue for us to show everyone like, hey, this is what football's about. Um, there are stories out there of people in the province, people from the province who still have dreams of coming to Manila to try and have a better life here, to have a better quality of life and to develop their football skill in addition to all of that. And so we're just kind of recounting what... Um, Yep. what's really happening out there and it's very exciting for us it's, it's exciting for me because uh, I don't act I mean I don't have professional acting experience it's just something that I feel like I want to do to help people out there learn more about soccer I mean starting a team playing soccer you know telling people about um, my experiences in soccer is one thing but to try and hit the market the Filipino market that loves um, movies that loves love stories uh, I mean, it's that that. loves cheesy lines. <laughs> <laughs> I've had to watch a lot of John Lloyd films and uh, Angel Oxen films. That's right. To try and get my acting, you know, a little bit better. Oh, it's you not should see Amanda. <laughs> she's good. <laughs> That's all I she's good. Um, anything else that you want to talk about? Well, um, I guess you know in. Because I've been, I've also been uh, working with the PFF, right? Like yes, last uh, sometime in March, April, I think, when 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 we held the uh, Asian Challenge football, Cup. yeah, the Challenge, the Cup, Challenge Cup. I was media officer there, right. and I, I got a chance to experience firsthand how it's like to manage and organize a you know an international uh, yep. competition, right? And I saw that uh, there's really a lot of opportunity to spread the word in terms of where football is in terms of where football is going and i've had a lot of talks with uh, for example the president of pff and okay. they have a lot of plans for football it's just that you know people don't seem to understand what these plans are and you know where it's going why not because there's very little uh material communicating uh what 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 the you know the the roadmap of football in the philippines would be like right. and plus of course uh there are some, you know, politics involved, etc. Some. Well, you should watch the episode with Coach Hans. Some is an <laughs> understatement. So. Well, I'll tell you this. You know, half of the work in the tell magazine me. is dealing with all the politics in football. Yes. Sadly, sadly. But, uh, you know, I think it's because, I don't know if it's because we're in the Philippines or, I don't know. But well, just you just honest, have to, Jellix. you know. You just have to deal with all these, you know, the politics. And I think that's the number one deterrent of, of football development in the country. And the many vested amongst inter other yes. things, a number of things. The vested interest, the politicking, you know, amongst uh, organized uh, football groups. To think that, you know, the reason why they're organizing themselves is so, just so we can, you know, we can have more organized football in the country. But really... That's where you see a lot of uh, destruction going on. Right. And it's, it's really sad. How many people in power are actually there to make a difference, like for the better and not in it for yeah. other reasons, yeah. well, right? Well, only a handful, I think. Only a handful. <laughs> so um, why doesn't the uh, president of the PFF um, do something different this time around? If he really wants to get his plans out there to let everybody know what the roadmap is, Holy cow, there's Football Philippines magazine, there's Facebook, there's other avenues for him to spread the word. Why doesn't he just do it? No, I think they, they've been doing a good job in terms of communicating it. It's just that sometimes it's not picked up easily. Okay. Because there are also a lot of uh, uh, criticisms as to whether or not this will, you know, this will uh, flourish or, you know, a lot of negative reactions to, to it also. So, you know... As a mm -hmm. as a media practitioner, your your responsibility is to to communicate the message, to spread out, to spread what's going on there. But at the same time, you also want to help. You know, for example, PFF promote uh, their cause, right? And with the magazine, that's what we're you know that's what we're trying to do. So the magazine is at their disposal if they want to use it. In fact, we have some sections here where we talk a lot about uh, what their plans are. You know what? In my opinion. The reason why people would actually doubt or have a lot of criticism for these plans or this roadmap they speak of is because they, it's probably one, not sustainable, two, not believable, three, I've never heard of any plans. Maybe uh, I just haven't really delved into it that much. But um, do you think that can be changed somehow? I mean, to give other football players out there who really want the sport to flourish in this country, uh, more hope. Well, you know, if, if, you, if you get to speak with the people at PFF, especially the president or the, the, the general secretary, 
you'd actually find hope in 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 what they're saying mm -hmm. like for the first time for example since i was a kid since i've been hearing a lot about you know the politics and football for the first time i see some reformists okay in 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 pff mm -hmm. uh but then there are also those who just simply i guess they just don't want football to you know to to progress or maybe their vested interests are being you know uh affected that's why you know they they start all these politics uh against whatever uh whatever reform uh, that are that's being done right so one example for example a uh, grassroots program mm -hmm. so ever since the ASCOs um you know sort, sort of revived football yep. uh one of the good things that PFF has been doing is really pouring a lot of resources and effort in their grassroots program mm -hmm. and I think that's a good thing because then we're looking at uh, future ASCOs in fact there's a group of 11 year old kids that are being brought to UK I think today they're flying today and uh, they're going there for a camp for a three-week camp and three weeks these are sponsored by a British Council by the British Council right, the British Council yeah and um, these kids are expected to be the 70 the under 17 team like a few years from now okay. so there's this process of really trying to develop uh young football players and sustaining them uh in the coming years so for me that's like you know just that's one big step right? one big step definitely a yeah. big step i yeah. think this is the very first time it's ever happened yeah so there are a lot of good stories like those and these are the kinds of stories that uh, we really look out for uh, in the magazine and uh, we feature so f yep. here and there you would you know you would have um, good stories about games like you know the Ascals won this the Ascals won that or the Malditas won this or that but then what we're after are you know inspiring stories that would probably help sustain uh, the development yeah and uh document uh, whatever is you know whatever good is being done for football basically well. what people haven't heard of before things that are being like actions and measures that um, people in power are doing now to try and get the sport more developed yeah which is amazing I and think there are a lot there are a lot of efforts really like in our experience like for example the cfl we started the corporate football league uh because we wanted to have a league of our own right like uh We've been playing with other teams and then we noticed that whenever the corporate teams play with the regular teams, we simply just get cream, right? A, a, lot, a lot of our teams get right. cream, right? And that's very frustrating for them. But there are many uh, who simply want to go back to football, who simply want to try football out. And in CFL, we're giving everyone that chance and uh, through, through the bracketing system that we have. So, for example, in the Division three division, we have the beginners yes and then division two the more advanced and then division one the competitive so you know you get to play with teams that are of your of, of the same level yes. right not so as not to discourage the yes. ones who are just starting out or who are interested because you probably don't want to kill their dreams or aspirations of yeah, because trying to play the sport if you get cream like 10 nil that's like you don't want to go back to the no, field never. anymore right it's probably more traumatizing than it is uh anything else yeah it yeah. is it is so just like what rcbc experienced and so now you know they're very proud of themselves that they're on they're on top of uh, their division yes yeah and the good thing about it is um everyone gets to gets a trophy oh really? so there are eight teams per division okay top four goes to uh cup finals yes. bottom four goes to plate finals uh -huh. even the fourth place will go home with a trophy so not for anything else but you know we just simply want to recognize that you know you guys played well yes. you did your part and yes. here you go you have a trophy and uh, football is a great way of getting people together it i is, mean it is. you know outside of the company they can they can get together play at the camp or bgc or wherever start training and then you know maybe a co-worker that has been oh so annoying passes you the ball and you're like oh man that's great so i'm gonna pass him the ball too yeah that's awesome that's why we also started what we call football for yuppies yes that's you actually the network, that. uh, the network foundation of uh, the corporate football league. So every weekend, we just invite teams to play um, mixed teams, right. meaning uh, male and female, uh, to play against each other, um, and then we group them together, and then that's how we form the the league. So football for yes. yuppies is an on ongoing thing. Right. On Sundays we play at Emperador. Mm -hmm. On Saturdays we play at uh, at BGC. At BGC. Yeah. Um, guys, actually, I've been through one of the games and I watched the third division teams play. And we have a YouTube clip here. It's about eight minutes, and uh, you should. Yeah, you yeah. should see Amanda. <laughs> <laughs> Alex is um, definitely in charge of the corporate football league, so we're going to watch that clip right now.
As you can see behind me, we have teams from all, all different sorts of companies. This one is CBRE versus Atlas Popco. And to my right, we have Baker McKenzie versus Floor. This is the second Saturday out of five consecutive Saturdays that the tournament is going on here at the Turf and the Bonifacio Global City. because actually this is just the third division but the competition is very stiff. I cannot even imagine what the first division will look like. Join me as I interview some of the players. Hi everyone, with me now is the Smart FC team and I'm here to ask them a few questions about their games. Richard de Guzman from Smart FC. Richard, what position do you play? Forward. He's a striker. Have you scored any goals yet in the tournament? Not so far, but I'm looking forward to one. <laughs> but he's looking forward to it. What does everyone think of Richard's game? Is he a formidable forward? Awesome. Yeah! Doing well. So we see he has a very supportive team. Richard, how does it feel to be part of this one of the strongest teams here in the tournament? Well, so far, um, what I feel is um, we're very unfortunate that we have this. Yeah. First game was a bit tough. Right. Who was your first game? It's HP. HP. I saw that game. I was actually watching. And what do you think of that game? It was a uh, nail fight, but uh, we put it on and uh, it's a good thing all of us got to win for, for each and every parcel of the game. So. Did you guys win that game? Yeah, 2-1. Two 2-1. One. Two one. Two one was the final score. Can you tell us your expectations and what do you think of this tournament so far? Well, for one, it's a good venue for camaraderie and also for athleticism and sports. So we're looking forward to meeting other teams as well as hopefully winning as well. Right, right. Um, but in case of people, Getting that title. Yeah. Are you, do you have that competitive spirit inside? I think so. I think so, yeah, I think so too from what I've seen. Alright, well thank you so much and good luck. Thank you. Right. Joining me to my right is Miss Abby Valia from the team Baker and McKenzie. Hi Abby. Hi. How do you feel to be a part of it? Really excited and um, very nervous at the same time. Abby, why don't you share with us some expectations and the comments that you have about the tournament? Okay, um, actually Baker and McKenzie, GSMFC uh, started just January 2013. Wow. So we're pretty young. young. Yes. <laughs> But then uh, we've been uh, practicing like every week or maybe uh, during weekends. Right. And we play not really to win, but we're here to have fun. I'm sure the other teams are practicing also in different camps. And they also invite us, but then we just don't have that time. So we can still make our practice and we're here and they're ready to win. Thank you so much, Thank Abby you. Valia. Thank you. Thank you. With me now is HBFC, and they were the team that just played against um, Smart FC. And to my left is Miss Erin Yap. Seems as though you have a lot of energy tonight. Is that true? I guess so. Yeah. I mean, these folks had a lot of Red Bulls, so <laughs> I guess they're all <laughs> like up for the games. Um, what did you think of your last game against? Um, well, we've competed with Smart before and actually we won against them before so it's kind of like um, a tie between the two teams but I'm sure we can bounce back from the loss earlier. Right. And uh, when are you going to be playing them again? Um, in the semis, of course. In the semis. <laughs> <laughs> But she's also very confident. Yes! Yeah. 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 Finals! In the, in the finals. So you're See us, Mark. <laughs> in the finals. I don't need to interview right now. What are your expectations for the tournament in general? Um, we expect to win. Win? Yes. W-I-N. Yes. That is awesome. Win all games, except for the 
last one, but we will win. But I have one question. Erin, how does it feel like to be uh, one of the few women players here in the tournament? Well, it's Are really aggressive, not shy, <laughs> not really. I'm playing, I'm really on the safe side. I've been playing for years and um, I really want to, I just want a clean game. Right. Yeah, so that's basically it. And what position do you play before I forget? Uh, it's uh, left wing. Left wing. Thank you for, the, for organizing this tournament. We, there wasn't really um, corporate leagues before, and now it's yeah, football's really starting here. And yeah. thank you very much, um, yeah. Team Asia. That's it. Oh, thank you for oh, 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 President Attorney Rolly Tulai. Attorney, can you please tell us about the tournament? Are you enjoying watching the level of competition here? Uh, what are your sentiments about it? Well, actually, I'm very excited to be here. Uh, this is something new. They, I know they worked hard for this uh, tournament, and uh, it's actually a tournament for for all the corporate football leagues. And CRFA is very supportive of all efforts to. Uh, uh, promote football and have more people playing in the turf. So it's right. really exciting times for us. And you have 24 teams here actually playing three different divisions, five months of seeding process. I mean, first for, for the first ever uh, CFL, this must be something that you're so proud to have, right? It's very big. You know, and, uh, with that note, I'd like to congratulate the uh, organizers for a job well done. Right. Uh, the, way, the level of uh, organization, of course, with the help of uh, the technical side, uh, it's something that I'm sure will uh, run for a long time. Yes, and uh, you know what? Attorney Rolly Delight himself is a football player, and you know, when you see competition like this, aren't you just dying to get in? Uh, actually, I uh, couldn't wait to play. Uh, <laughs> it just kills me to just be on the sideline. Side yeah. You know how it is. You're also of a football course, player. Of course, of course. Attorney Rolly Tulay actually sanctioned the first ever Benai Football League. So uh, thank it's part you of my job. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. And there you have it. Attorney Rolly Tulay, president of the NCRFA. And there you have it, the third division teams battle each other out in the second Saturday of the Corporate Football League. The top two teams are Baker and McKenzie and Smart FC. Stay tuned as we watch the first division teams fight each other on the third Saturday of this Corporate Football League. My name is Amanda Fernandez from Seagan FC. Have a good night. that uh, eight minute video about the corporate football league um stay tuned for the other uh, videos to come oops sorry <laughs> and uh Jellix actually has a surprise here he has <laughs> um the trailer of the film a part of the trailer a I guess. part of yeah. the trailer okay. um so we're very excited to watch that and we were actually able to get it online so let's let's watch it let's try it out Ma'am Chelsea, may naghahanap po sa inyo. Ha? Sino yun? Hindi ko po sila kalala ilan yung tops. Okay, thank you. Oh, hi, Phil! Napadaan ka! Hi, Chelsea. Alam mo, alam ko nung bakit Chelsea pangalan. Oh, bakit? Siguro... Fan mga magulang mo na football? Um, siguro. Oh, bibili ko ba ng jersey? Eto, oh. Chelsea, bagay ito sa'yo. 
Ma'am, what coffee do you want? Three in one? Five in one? Seven in one? Or only one? Ay, nako. May juice na lang ba? Of course. May juice. Tong orange juice, oh. My booster. Freshly squeezed from my heart. Itong sandwich. May cheese bread. Parang ikaw, palaman ng isip ko. Alam mo, Phil? Parang wala na akong gana, eh. Hindi, hindi, hindi. Ito, seryoso na. Alam mo ba kung paano nalalaman ko kung paano ko yung dalawang tao? Ah, uh, paano? Sa pamayit ng kanilang tayo. So, ano yan? Ganito. Ah! Phil, ang corny mo! I don't know, it got cut. Oh, so that's part of the trailer? Part, part of the trailer, yeah. But uh, there you see Amanda uh, in a different uh, form. <laughs> As an Fuck, actress. <laughs> Fuck you, dude. <laughs> okay, guys. I lost some weight. You should wait for the drama scenes. Those are the tweet um scenes, pa lang eh, di ba? Right, the drama right. scenes are just really Highly intense. Highly inspired by John Lloyd and Angel X. And what movie? What were the two movies you made me watch? Amnesia what Girl. Were those? Amnesia Girl and another you know, favorite natin. We just had one favorite one, mm. Bea and and John Lloyd. Anyway, but. No, you should watch for Amanda. I'll watch out for Amanda. Uh, she's she's going to make a name for herself. Okay, anyway. So, um, <laughs> let's talk about Football Philippines Magazine. Angelix, um, do you mind me asking what your objective is in creating, producing um, this well, magazine? Well, I think, because we have, we have a tagline here. Uh, it says, Towards One Football Nation. I guess that's the vision that we have. Uh, having grown in a okay. nation, a football nation that, well, we're not really a football nation yet, but having... Having grown as football players in a country where it's so divided, right, and there's just so much uh, divisiveness in terms of in terms of football. So we want to somehow one day see our country, you know, as as one uh, football nation, meaning everyone just really cooperating, right. collaborating uh, uh, for football. Because right now we see pockets of uh, best practices, but not really as a as a whole. So we want to be part of that movement, I guess. For sure. Yeah. And um, you're planning to kind of bring foot, uh, Filipinos together through football, is that what it is? Yes. What's the deeper meaning to this towards one football nation? Um, you, you, know, you know how football has a, or you know how football gives hope to a lot of kids, right? Definitely. Uh, like, I think not only kids. Well, yeah, actually yeah, a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. Of, yeah. That's why it's the most popular sport in the world and they call it the beautiful game. But uh, through football, we, we hope to, to give a lot more, uh, I guess, hope and, you know, opportunities for for everyone like when we do uh tournaments we also do what we call uh, advocacy football like we did freedom cup you played there right uh um, oh, no, I, I think i was injured oh you were injured uh secret play there and so we do different uh, advocacy uh football as well to to promote uh different um causes yeah so we hope to yeah we hope to see one day that you know we'll, we'll be proud as a nation too as, as football players Okay, so we have five more minutes, but I want to ask um, one really crucial question. Um, over the last uh, two years that you've been producing a magazine, you've had 14 different issues. Do you think that you're somewhat successful towards building a more united nation through Football Philippines magazine and um, all the other efforts that you've been doing, Corporate Football League, Football for Yuppies, organizing so many things, being um, the media manager of the uh, challenge cup all these different things well seeing a one football nation that's still many years or maybe decades to, to come but we're hopeful but uh li the little steps that we've been taking uh make and making i think have been really successful we started with, we started with a magazine uh we're starting out a film 
which we know will be successful with you there. We started out a league of our own. Right. Uh, we created a network of, uh, of, of yuppies, you know, football players. And we still have a lot of plans uh, in store uh, in the coming months and years. And uh, yeah, we're very optimistic about this. And hopefully all of these uh, things that we're doing will contribute uh, to this vision of a, you know, of a one uh, football nation. Yeah, I firmly believe that it is already currently doing that. I just wanted to see what you would say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, if there's anything that I guess one, one if there's anything that we'd like to, to say out there, uh, you know, the, the, there's just so many opportunities for football, right? We don't have to compete for these opportunities. Correct. Yeah. There's a lot of room to collaborate. Mm -hmm. We don't have to, you know, put each other down. Right. Uh, just so one competition could be better than the other, or one yeah. magazine could be better than right. the other. Um, if we're talking about money, there's a lot of resources available mm -hmm. for football, and if we just, you know, sort of open the market and see more opportun the, the many opportunities that, that yep. are there, then a lot more people will not profit, but benefit. Like there are... That's a good term. Yeah. Not profit, but, but benefit. benefit. Uh, FIFA, I think, estimates that there's like 1.6 million uh, Filipino footballers in the country. So that imagine... That gave me goosebumps. That's right? amazing. I mean, Imagine that, oh my God, imagine I didn't that even know statistic, that. right? So there's really a lot of players that, you know, we can still reach out to. You know, I, because I asked Coach Hans last week and he mentioned that the NCRFA actually, they don't have a concrete number in how many players there are, female or I guess male. And now you're saying that Well, they need to, they, they want this verified, so I've heard. So I hope so. They want this, but uh, roughly so. that's that's. So the you number can that we're measure growth. At. The only way to measure growth is if you start somewhere. You need to know what the base number is to see whether you're growing over the number of years. There has to be information, and that's why I truly believe in the, at uh, it, with Football Philippines magazine making a difference. And what Jellix is doing is is super pivotal in the development. The dissemination of information is super critical. And I mean, we can talk forever, but. You know, Jellix, thank you for sharing your time with us. Do you want to say anything else? I mean, you're wearing the corporate. Oh, uh, please uh, watch the corporate uh, football league. Uh, we're, we're still playing our games. We'll have our finals on the 31st. Uh, just log on to corporatefootball.org uh, or Facebook uh, corporate football league and you'll see the, the games there. And uh, yuppies out there, if you want to play football, just, you know, get in touch with us and we'll slot you in one of our weekend football uh, tournaments. That's great. Yeah, thank you, Amanda, yeah. for this opportunity. Guys, thanks so much for joining us in this episode. Um, I'm looking forward to next week's episode and uh, Jonah being back. And uh, we wish him the best of luck, for sure. I thought he was going to call. He was supposed to call and uh, say hi to everyone, but that never happened. Um, so best of luck to Jonah. And, you know, we hope that everyone goes out to support him this Saturday. Again, Games at 7, University of Makati. Guys, stay safe, stay dry, and we'll see you next week. Bye.